Furious Driving, presented by Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week. And Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining, and you can protect, clean and care for your car with 10% off site-wide using code FD10. Now, like Dumb and Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all areas of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. And let's give a proper Furious Driving channel welcome to Beryl the Beetle, the latest addition to the Furious fleet, a car which let's be honest, has divided opinion here on the channel. And I'm a little sorry to say that not everyone has been as warm in their welcome as perhaps they could have been. For me, this is the first time I've ever owned a Volkswagen of any kind, classic, modern, golf, whatever. Quite a few people have said they've owned these Beetles and they've loved them. Even more people have said that the 1.9 PD engine in this thing is an absolute trooper that'll do like 300 or 400,000 miles, much like the V8 in the Crown Victoria here and the Volvo's red block <laughs> and the W123. So basically I've got about 10 million miles worth of motoring amongst my fleet now. But a lot of you were like, oh my God, I can't believe you've got one of those things. And I was actually a little bit surprised at the vehement anger directed towards this quite cute little car. But I have to say, I quite like it. But even more than the comments saying, blimey, you've got a Beetle, was a shock that I traded the Mondeo for a Beetle. But hey, let's live life unpredictably and keep things fresh. In terms of content, perhaps it wasn't the best move because I'll talk you through the service history on this thing in a moment, and it is an absolute peach. But in terms of a car, and if I'm doing a flip series and I'm turning the car from one car to another car to a profit, whether we go to a Porsche or an Austin 7, who knows? We don't really have a direction as such. This is a really good one. So first of all, I'm gonna give this a really good wash. I've got some Diamond Bright ceramic blast and ceramic shampoo, so we can make this thing look actually really nice. And then I can show you how good the bodywork on this thing actually is. And then I'll talk you through the service history and the fact that this thing is a really good car. Okay, so without further ado, as I believe you have to say on the internet, let's get the jet wash out and start blasting this thing. Normally while this is doing its job and soaking into the dirt and lifting dirt away from the paint, I'll be going in with the ruby red wheel cleaner, but I wouldn't want to waste it on these wheel trims because they are going in the bin very shortly. I've got big plans for those wheels, which will absolutely transform the look of this car and make it, well, 10 times the car it is already. I know whenever I use this particular kind of snow foam, this is a ceramic foam from Diamond Bright, people always comment, oh, that's far too thin, it's running off too quickly. This is how it's meant to be used and this is how it works. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. When you see it done really thick on the videos, that's really being layered on for effect. That This is really how it does work. Right, so now it's done its thing. Let's blast it off. There's a, a lot of bird poop on this car. I don't know how anyone can not love this car. This is such a cute vehicle that the eye detector on my camera keeps mistaking these headlights for actual eyes of an animal or a person. It thinks it's more of a human than I am. Well, it might have more personality than me, I don't know. I'll apologise for the background noise, but uh, some neighbours are having some landscaping done, so it's quite loud around here. But the reason I'm doing this today, rather than welding on Hippo, is because it's back at one degree again today, which is just ludicrous for, okay, it's January, so it should be cold, but it just feels so, so cold. At least here I've got buckets of warm water. Hippo can wait another day or two. But what I'll be using is Diamond Bright Ceramic Shampoo, which, like the snow foam, leaves a trace of ceramic in the paint, which not only makes it really lovely and shiny, gives a real gloss to the paint, but also helps repel dirt for the future. Keep it going. Always start in the door shuts, where well, I do anyway. And of course, as always, using the two bucket system, which means the dirt stays in the, in the fresh water and the sponge always gets a bristle full, whatever you want to call it, of uh, nice suds. This roof is absolutely tiny. 
And once I'm on the outside of the car, always start at the top and work down and the water stays cleaner again for longer. Just giving it a good old blast underneath the floor as well. Got the lace of road salt off it. And now we just microfiber the thing off and we really can see well, what I hope is how good this paint actually is. Because sudsing it down, it looks like this car is in fantastic condition. So now we have a very shiny Beetle. It actually looks really, really nice. This shade of blue comes up very well indeed. What is next for this car is gonna be the next two stages of paint preparation. First of all, I'm gonna clay bar it, then I'm gonna machine polish it to get the absolute best out of it. But before I do that, now we can see it in a clean state with no road dirt on it, I can show you all the things that are wrong, the defects that need to be corrected. Now, first of all, starting at the front, the lights, these headlamp lenses and these indicators. I do actually really like the gingicators on it. Gingicators are cool again now. For a long time, you'd have switched these out for white or black lights. Now, it's kind of cool to have them again. They are very dull though, so what I will do is get some uh, polishing compounds and special stuff for this, which will polish it and reseal it. By the time this video finishes, it might have even arrived. Who knows? Secondly, we have got a little scuff here, which hopefully will polish out when I get the deep machine polishing out. Likewise, a few little scratches down here. On the first video, someone commented they could see that the paint on the bumper was different and the fitting wasn't right. And I'm standing here looking at it and I still can't see that. I think it must have been the road dirt and just the, the way that the filter, it's a polarizing filter on the camera. Maybe that does something to the way the paint looks. I don't think that has been changed. So yeah, that is the front of the car. There are a few stone chips here. But there's nothing I can do about that without a full repaint and we're not gonna go down that route because that's a little bit excessive. So I'll take the camera off the tripod now and show you a few more things in detail. I have to say, I really do like these in-mirror indicator pods. They look really cool and you can see them glowing from the driver's seat, which is pretty cool. I will leave the barrel stickers on because it's part of the car's character. Moving down here, we have got this rust I showed you on the initial walk around of the car. So I'm gonna have to sand this back uh, rust kill it and then get some paint mixed up to the correct colour. There's a place near here, uh, Kent paint and something or other, really good place. They will mix up aerosol cans to the exact colour match. So I'll get that done on this side. Looking inside the door, the doors are actually really good apart from that. And the sills look, well, cosmetically on top look nice. Coming around further back, we have got a few more scuffs on here. The trick here, is if you can lick your finger and rub it, if it disappears, you can pretty much polish it away. So I will polish that away, so that will look very nice indeed. A couple of little marks on the uh, tailgate because things get dropped when they're being loaded. Par for the course. We've got exactly the same rust on the other door. Um, you can see it more clearly now, there's no sort of road salt and stuff on it, so that needs sorting out. More concerningly, it's not serious, but it's a bit irritating, up here on the roof. Up here on the roof, along this rail here, we have got rust starting under the paint on both sides of this, so that will need to be sanded back and painted, and that is at the back of the car and at the front. Not in the middle though, interestingly. That might take more of an effort to paint, so that's something I'll look into before we move the car on as well. Interestingly though, none of that down the passenger side. That's something quite reassuring about the car's history, are these stickers, the new Beetle uh, Club Great Britain here on both side windows and repeated in the rear window. Somebody who joins the club for the car is clearly enthusiastic about it. So they will have probably taken quite good care of it. Likewise, Dubway, so a Volkswagen fan. And these number plates, they are the 3D effect. I'm not a huge fan of them, but they are from a company called VW Services. Now I haven't Googled these guys, but something tells me they like Volkswagens. So perhaps the previous owners of this car prior to Tim were Volkswagen fans. They had a classic Beetle or a camper van or something, and this is a daily car, I don't know. But I'm also gonna imagine they're probably an older person because TCB on here, taking care of business. This is the Elvis Presley uh, little slogan and logo. So an older person who won't have thrashed it. So I'm hoping this all suggests good care and attention of a car that's been well looked after. Now returning briefly to these wheels because they are an issue. <laughs> There's a slight amount of pull in the steering. So, looking at the previous MOT and the recent service history in this car, the rear tyres, which are decent brand Goodyear's unfortunately, are apparently showing a little bit of cracking 
and age. So although they've got some good tread on them, they probably want changing due to age alone. The front tires, good tread, but uh, not a particularly incredible brand. Constancy, which is not a brand I'm particularly aware of. Um, these have got good tread on the outside, but because the tracking uh, was showing up as being out on the last bit of service work the car had, they are sort of wearing more on the inside. So it basically wants the tracking doing all four tires changing and 100% something different doing with those hubcaps. There's quite a few options for this, but it does mean that I have got an excuse to do all four wheels and make them all lovely. Now, excuse the dirty floor. We actually took this to the seaside at the weekend, and so there's a, a lot of chalky mess here in the carpets. But one thing which Tim didn't mention to me was that this bonnet pull does fall off when you pull it. But it does the trick though. It does actually open the bonnet. So if it works, it's fine. So looking under the bonnet quickly, so here under the bonnet, I did accidentally say in one of the clips in the last video about this car, it's a 1.8, I did also say it was a 1.9, which it is. I don't know why I said 1.8, I'm just used to saying petrol sizes for some reason. Anyway, it's the 1.9 TDI PD engine. This is one of the most long-lived, toughest Volkswagen engines in history. It's 105 horsepower, 240 newton meters of torque, and combined 52 mpg, according to the books. It runs really rather nicely. Not the most rapid car in the world, with a 0-60 of 10.5 seconds and a top speed of, I think, 111. Uh, this was supplied in the boot, and it is one of the turbo pipes, which is apparently split. So I thought, fantastic, there's an easy fix, because there's a very similar looking pipe on top. And this is a really good running car, which does run quite well. But... This aside, which doesn't really affect the running, it just means that it kind of puffs a bit of black smoke and this sometimes feels a tiny bit down on power. So this does need to be fitted, but when it's not one degree. Interior-wise, it is very nice. As I said in the uh, introduction to this car when I first picked it up, it has got the vase and the flower, which is an absolute fantastic piece and frankly a deal breaker because if you, you really want this car with all of the bits and pieces that go with it it's got electric mirrors it's got electric windows central locking obviously um, air conditioning which works uh, not much else in terms of fun and functions five-speed manual gearbox a rotating cup holder which is really cool someone has drilled some kind of mounting thing in the dashboard and there are some scratches and now when i come to look at it more closely the steering wheel is actually quite worn on top and some of the paint has gone as well so that i am on the lookout on ebay for a new wheel to give it a slightly fresher feel inside the cabin but trying to get the same textured finish is proving a little bit hard seats look pretty much unworn i think i will run the bissel over them they don't look particularly dirty but i think if i put the bissel over they will come up a little bit fresher just a little bit smarter uh, overall, the interior though is, is really nice. I do rather quite like the general appearance of this car. The seats though are comfortable, but not anywhere near as comfortable as the Mondeo. I drove up to pick up the car in the Mondeo, it's about two hours, two and a half hours or so, and I was fresh as a daisy coming out of that 1998 Ford. A little bit less good on my back on the way home. So they're, they're comfortable, but a long journey, not quite as nice, support for me personally anyway. I do rather like though, the incredible high ceiling, it makes it feel so spacious and airy. And when you climb out of the car, that huge square door, it's just enormous. Massive, massive, one of the, must be one of the biggest door panels of any car ever, frankly, this side of Escalade. And a couple of people did notice there was a small crack in the windscreen. I did notice that as well myself on the drive home, but it's not grown at all. It seems to have started here and terminated at the edge of the glass. Doesn't seem to be getting any bigger. I've run up to the MOT testing station and just said, is this gonna be a fail when the MOT's due? Because it is due in March, so when I part with this car, I will part with it with a fresh MOT on it. And I said, no, that's out of your kind of viewed area. It's kind of just on the edge. So we're okay there. Incidentally, these wipers, they work, but they're a bit smeary. So I'll change the wiper blades as well. Just a, a short list of very small things that you're doing on this car. Really is rather good. Okay, so something that I really did like about the um, option of getting this car was the service history with it. The fact that it's been really well looked after in recent years. So going back to November of 2022, which is only about a month and a half ago, it had a new battery. That's 60 quid spent. Going back to July last year, so six months ago and only 2,000 miles ago, it had a new cam belt and water pump, which is a huge job, which I now don't have to do. That was £324 for the cam belt and another 130 for the water pump. So that's big money that's been spent on this car already. And it had an oil and filter change at the same time and various other bits and pieces, auxiliary belt, a loose heat shield. And at that same visit, which was quite an expensive day out, they had uh, new front brake discs and pads. Also in July last year, they had a new third brake light, or bought anyway, that's 50 quid for the part alone. So money being spent, left, right, and indeed center. So going back over the last year or so, this said all the good stuff that needs doing done to it. 
which is great because a lot of the expensive things that cars often need to be having done have been done. So that's less expense for me, less content for you. For me, it's great because there's no weird chasing mysterious faults. It's just a car we can get in and drive and enjoy for a, a few weeks or a month or two until we move on for the next one. We'll just make it better and better. We'll sort out those cosmetic things and see what else is wrong with it. So all told, very happy indeed with this particular flip. Do you know what? I absolutely hate this time of year. I've driven about 10 miles in this car, maybe not even that, and already it's filthy and I've not got around to doing the next stages of washing it, so I've got to wash it a second time. But anyway, that is by the by. Um, one thing that came up in the comments quite a few times when I bought this car the other day is watch out for the sills because that's where they go. And I haven't jacked it up yet, but it does drive very well indeed. It doesn't feel like there's anything wrong with the suspension, but let's take a look at the floor of the car. And well, without taking the plastic seals off, I've got to say that does look pretty good. So I'm just passing it around in the torchlight under there. Yeah, I think we're probably okay. Let's go to the back in the other corner. It's under the back. So it's got some surface rust on there. A bit of surface on the outer sill as well, but we'll sand that off. Like on the roof and the door, something to catch quickly right now, and then we'll be okay. I think we're okay. Let's check the passenger side. Whoop, under we go. Oh, hang on, what's that? Is that a hole? No, it's not, it's just, I thought it was a hole. It is just where the paint under seal is peeling off, so I'll clean that up and get it under seal before it becomes an actual problem. So we've caught that just in time. So yeah, I thought, when I first saw that on the screen, the camera a second ago, I thought maybe it was a hole, but no, it's just under seal peeling off, so I'll get that scratched off, get that cleaned up. So lucky we've caught that just, just in time, thankfully. And we'll check the front. This looks like a similar deal. We've got a bit of missing under seal, but no actual hole. So yeah, we are very lucky here that we've caught the car just in time before any damage does occur. So lucky us. Climbing back inside. It is quite a fun and funky interior. I do like the repeated big round circle and elongated uh, little riser around it, which matches the front and rear lights on these air vents here. You can't see it in the daylight, but this binnacle, which is an all-in-one cluster, like on an original Beetle, it actually is backlit blue. It looks really fun at night. Likewise, the uh, clock and temperature gauge up here in the ceiling are backlit in blue as well. It's even got a sunglasses holder, which is kind of rubbery inside. Awesome. This car is so nice. So, the next step with Beryl, get the paintwork sorted out, getting absolutely glowing, sort out the wheels, get something different on there because that one needs to be done, sort out the little rust spots on the doors, the roof, and that sill. None of it's gone through, it's all just cosmetic, so it shouldn't be too long and too difficult to sort out. Mechanically, the only thing needing to do on it is that hose pipe, sort out the tracking, and I think we're basically there. And inside the car, it's really just cosmetics. I can run the Bissell over the seats. If I can find a new steering wheel, I will, but other than that, there's not a lot to do. And then this car will be ready to, well, to move on to a new home. Whether it's for money or for swaps, well, we'll figure that one out nearer the time. So, this is Project Beryl. A few little jobs to get going on. At least the weather is starting to warm up, so things like paint can be done now, because a few weeks ago when it was freezing cold, forget doing paint, it's gonna run off in the rain and not dry in the cold. So anyway, it is absolutely fascinating how divisive this car has been. Some people really like it and they've had like dozens of the things because they adore them. A few other people have been absolute, well, hater is not even a strong enough word to describe the opinions I've had of this car, which I actually kinda like. Um, I don't think I'm gonna keep it. I'm tempted because I've seen photos of the modified, lowered, big wheels, get the real gloss on the paint, tinted out. They too actually look pretty cool, but I don't find the seat perfectly comfortable for me. I can't quite get the exact comfortable seating position. For that reason alone, I probably won't keep it, although it would be quite fun. But the point of the car is to trade on and try and get into something a little bit better every time. Anyway, let me know what you think about this car. Do you even want this car? Give me a shout in the comments below. And if you've liked this video, as always, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Furious Driving, presented by Bidding Classics, the online marketplace for appreciating classic cars, with more cars added every week.
and Diamond Bright, keeping the Furious fleet shining. And you can protect, clean and care for your car with 10% off site-wide using code FD10. And like Diamond Bright, Lancaster Insurance Services is a company I've been a happy customer of for quite some time. Lancaster are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK, covering all areas of vintage to modern classic car and motorbike. So give them a call and see if you can save on your cover. Follow the links in the description below.